Hot Rod zoomed onto the front pages of American newspapers in the 1950s as speed-crazed teenagers turned streets into racetracks. Hot Rodding was getting a bad name. It was clear something had to be done. Robert E. Peterson, a young man with the necessary PR skills and vision to see how to turn things around, was also interested in hot rodding. Talking to the attendees at car shows and at the Dry Lakes convinced him that hot rodding needed a newsletter or magazine. Oh, I'd been going to the lakes, and of course my dad was a mechanic. I grew up in a garage, and, um, and I was out uh, racing with the guys, and we all were, kept talking about we really need a magazine, something where people can talk to each other. He turned to a friend's father who published a magazine for help. The result, Hot Rod Magazine hit the newsstands in 1947. Some thought using the name Hot Rod, with its outlaw street gang connotations, was risky. We discussed that many times, whether that was a name to use, but we always came back to it. The magazine helped the sport grow. It reached the older hot rodders and a new group of readers, the post-war teenager. But street racing was a problem. The public clamor increased. It was time for someone to find a way to safely harness the urge to go fast. Quite a few people were very down on hot rods. And uh, they were all trying to ban hot rods, do what they could to stop them. And uh, I guess you can't blame some. <laughs> the Highway Patrol had quite a few problems. Wally Parks and Peterson developed a plan to turn the image of hot rodding around. Why not encourage officially sanctioned races in every community across the country, they thought. The National Hot Rod Association, the NHRA, was born. Drag strips soon sprouted up around the country. Peterson and Parks lured the street racers to the drag strips and calmed down the public. But this was just the beginning for Robert E. Peterson. His efforts on behalf of hot rod enthusiasts continued to grow. Hot rodding became an ingrained part of the American culture. It inspired clothing designs, television shows, movies, and songs. It launched an industry estimated to generate more than $30 billion a year in sales. All this from a few kids who had a need for speed and a man who became their leader. His magazines and world-class automotive museum are just a part of his lasting legacy. Robert E. Peterson will be missed, but he will not be forgotten. Next time you hear it thunder, it just may be Peterson teaching the angels how to race. <laughs>